In this video, we're going to introduce Euclidean geometry. That is, you introduce some of the most basic things in it, and we're going to inter introduce that via uh, GeoGebra. So by now, you should be pretty familiar with Euclidean geometry since you've been exposed to parts of it before you even started kindergarten. The native environment for the basic geometry sketch pad and GeoGebra geometry programs is a single Euclidean plane. So informally, we can think of a Euclidean plane as an infinitely big flat surface that extends forever in two dimensions. You should also be very familiar with a Cartesian coordinate system for Euclidean plane. This coordinate system for the plane gives a one-to-one -one correspondence between points in the plane and ordered pairs of real numbers. GeoGebra gives the coordinates of any constructed point and equations for constructed geometric figures in its algebra view. So here are some illustrations of the basic geometric figures constructed in GeoGebra. However, this is just a static picture. But anyway, this is a point, a line segment, a ray, a line, and a circle. But what really makes this work is the uh, dynamic nature of GeoGebra. So let's take a look at that. So if you just go to uh, GeoGebra.org, it will come up with this uh, this website here. Let's see, I'm gonna get this kind of set how I want it. Okay. And if well, let's just go to the GeoGebra Classic, or if you download the GeoGebra app and go to here, this is what it basically looks like. Uh, there is the algebra view over here, which I'm actually going to turn. Well, actually, let's leave it on for a moment. So we can start by placing a point with this tool. And if you notice over here in the algebra view, it gives you the Cartesian coordinates of that point. It is a dynamic point, so it can be moved anywhere over here in the plane. And no matter where it goes, it gives you the point here. You can actually enter a coordinates here, and it will plot the point. So, for example, if I plot the point 3, 4, uh, it will graph that as well. It is still dynamic, so it can be moved around. And, of course, the coordinates change over here. I'm going to actually turn off the algebra view. So go over here and click view and turn that off so that we're really just dealing with the geometry part of it. And for the moment, I'm going to actually turn uh, turn off the grid lines like this and get rid of the axes. So now I'm going to think of it as a more uh, synthetic way of looking at it where we just have points. Now we can also take two points and make a line. So a line is determined by two points, and this is the entire line. If I were to open the algebra view, it would give me the equation of that line. If we construct a point on that line, if we click on the line there, or use point on object, then we construct a point that cannot be moved off the object. It's free to move along that line. Notice it does not control the line, whereas this point controls where the line is, as, as well as this one. Whereas point A might temporarily be on the line, but it's not really on the line because it's not constructed that way. It can be moved off of the line. So that's what a line looks like. A ray is a half of a line. Another name for it is a half line. It has an endpoint, and then it's controlled by endpoint and another point on the ray. So it goes on forever in this direction. If you were to draw this by hand on paper, whenever you got to the end of it, you would normally put a little arrow symbol on both ends of the, of the uh, line and on one end of the ray. Really, the ray doesn't have an end. It, only ha it has one end. It has a, uh, it's called the endpoint, which is right here but it doesn't have one on the other end. We can also talk about a line segment, or just call the segment here for short, and it's defined by the two endpoints and all the points between there. Notice between is something that is an undefined term, 
in a synthetic approach such as Hilbert's, uh, but it is a defined term in our treatment and also in an analytic approach such as Burkhoff's treatment. So we will eventually define in a little bit in a couple videos down the road here we'll define what's meant by a line segment and array using our distance. Um, the set of all points at fixed distance from a given point is called a circle and so we can define a circle by defining its center and a point on the circle. Notice that the points point on the object. Let's click there. This point here is a point on the on the circle. If you take its distance from the center point, it will be the same no matter what. In fact, I can measure that distance by going to here to get some measurement tools. The distance or length. The distance from here to this point is, uh, well, it's a 3.77. And notice no matter where I put it, that distance is always 3.77. Now, it's a dynamic circle, so I can make it bigger. Now, the distance is 6.11. But again, no matter where I go around that circle, that distance is the same. So that's a circle. It's a fixed distance from the given point called the center. The center is not part of the circle. This stuff inside here is not part of the circle. That's the interior of the circle. Points out here, which are further away from the center than the radius, is the exterior. The points that are closer to the center than the radius, that's called the interior. And the points actually on the circle itself are just the ones around here. Uh, we can also specify a circle by center and radius. Um, let's see, we need to, to specify a radius. Let's see, let me do it again. Circle by center and radius. We can type in a radius here, say 5. So this is a circle. Uh, let me go back to where I move it. Sorry. So notice that there's no control point on this circle except for the center itself, center, no matter where I put it, it stays a radius of 5. You can control that with a parameter. Let me show you that real fast. Uh, we can make a slider. Let's make a slider here. So I do a slider. I want it to be, a, let's see, I want it to be a, a positive number for distance. So say I can go from 0 to, oh, let's say 25. And let's go small increment, 0 0.01, let's say. And there we have a slider that gives us a number. Now I can do a circle with center and radius. I do center and then radius is A. And so here is the circle here. Oops. Let's go. Always got to remember to click back on this thing to move it around. Uh, we're starting to get a lot of things on the screen here. Let's get rid of a bunch. Let's, uh, let's highlight a bunch of things here. Right click, go over, and just delete a bunch of stuff. Get it out of the way. All right, so let's take this circle here. Uh, as we do this slider, then that slider is the radius of that circle. Um, let's see what else. If you take a, a point on the circle and make a line segment to the center of the circle, we're going to call that a radial segment. The length of that segment, which can be measured this way, the length of that segment, get post, posted it there, are the distance between those two points Oops, I apparently click the same one twice so there's the undo up here the distance from one point to the other that's that distance is the same as the length of that line segment so two different ways of saying the same thing notice it's the same no matter where I go here and it's controlled by this slider here. Okay. So that is the distance. So that distance is called the radius of the circle. The the line segment going from the center to the circle itself is called a radial segment. Now some people use the word radius for both 
both of those things, both for the geometric figure, the set of points, which is that line segment, in this case the line segment AQ, and then also for that distance. Uh, I think that's a, a bad choice because um, knowing the uh, knowing the um, distance is one thing, it's a number, and the other is a, a geometric figure, it's a set of points. Those are two completely different kinds of things. So it's bad to use the same term for that. So we're going to use the term radius for the distance and then uh, radial segment for the segment. Now we can also have what's called a chord, C-H-O-R-D, and that goes from one point on the circle. Oops, I missed. Try again. Point on the circle to another point on the circle. So if I did that correctly, these will not be able to leave the circle. Yeah, so these are all called chords. A chord that goes to the center, or temporarily it is there, that's called a diameter. So let's see, we can make a diameter this way. Uh, let's see, let's uh, put a point on this object. Let's make a ray going from that point through the center. Let's find the intersection of that ray and that circle. Let's go to this object, which is the ray, and hide it. Don't show it. And let's make a segment, a line segment, going from that point to there. And now we have what I'm going to call a diametric chord. The length of that diametric chord is the diameter <clears throat> so right now the radius of the circle is four and a half the diameter is nine so notice the diameter is in the radius and the diameter are numbers and the diametric chord and the radial segment are line segments that is geometric figures uh, specific sets of points Okay. All right, so those are some basic things here. Uh, if we have, let me draw another line here. If we, we, of course, we could have a line that doesn't intersect the circle at all. If a line just intersects the circle in a single point, we call that tangent to the circle. If the line intersects the circle twice, it's called a secant line to the circle. Okay. Um, so those are some basic, let's see, is there anything else that I want to do right away? So those are some of the most basic things. There's a lot of other things that we can do with, with GeoGebra, but the point is, is we can make some of our basic things, right? Points, lines, planes, um, line segments, circles, and so forth. We can make these and make illustrations of these dynamic illustrations of these in GeoGebra. Okay, and so we're going to think of that as being our basic idea, our basic model of Euclidean geometry. And we do want to think of that model as being a dynamic model, not something static on a piece of paper, but something that can be moved. So, once again, as the name suggests, GeoGebra makes explicit use of the connection between algebra in geometry given by coordinate system, analytic geometry, I said this is an analytic approach when we do this, and the distance between two points, say with coordinates x1, y1, and coordinates x2, y2, can be measured with the following Euclidean distance formula, which you should be familiar with. Delta x is x2 minus x1, and delta y is y2 minus y1. So delta x is the difference in the x's, or the horizontal change, Delta Y is the difference in Y's or the vertical change. And then the distance then is the square root of X, delta X squared plus delta Y squared. So uh, later on, once we've introduced all the postulates for Euclidean geometry, and then by that point we will have eliminated the other geometries uh, that we're going to be looking at from our study, we will prove that this has to be the distance metric in Euclidean geometry. Of course, you're already familiar with the theorem that makes this happen. It's the famous Pythagorean theorem. 
Recall that the Pythagorean theorem tells us that for a right triangle with legs of length A and B and hypotenuse, longest side, of length C, that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So the Euclidean distance formula and the Pythagorean theorem are basically the same idea. Here C is the Euclidean distance, A is delta X, or the horizontal change, and B is delta Y, the vertical change. The Pythagorean theorem is valid in Euclidean geometry, but it's not true for the other geometries we'll include in unified geometry, spherical, taxicab, and hyperbolic geometries. So we will postpone its proof for a while, uh, for quite a while, till we till we get uh, further on down the line. Okay, so uh, I've already illustrated this, but here's a task for you. In GeoGebra, be sure that you know how to use GeoGebra to construct Euclidean points, lines, rays, and line segments. You should also be able to construct Euclidean circles in three ways. By specifying a center point and a radius, a distance. By specifying a center point and a point on the circle. And by specifying three points on the circle. I didn't show you that one, but I bet you can figure that one out from the tools. You should also be able to measure the distance between any two points and the length of a line segment. And all of this is within a single plane in basic good old Euclidean geometry. Now, for hundreds of years, Euclidean geometry was thought to be the only legitimate way to describe reality. However, we will see below and in our next three videos, there are other geometries that are practical and in some cases even more useful than Euclidean geometry depending on the certain situation you might be in. So this is a quick introduction to Euclidean geometry. In the next video we'll introduce taxicab geometry, then we'll introduce uh, spherical geometry and hyperbolic geometry as well. And so we'll have an idea then of models for all four of these geometries which we will use uh, to investigate ideas about geometry in parallel in all of these geometries for uh, several of these uh, playlists over several weeks of my course.